my, when, I, when I look back at sort of what I've done, it's being fearless that's really got me through. Even coming here to this conference, yesterday when I was setting out from London, a friend of, my, friend of mine called me and said, are you mad? Where are you going? Haven't you seen the weather? Haven't you seen what they said in the newspapers? Storm of the century. Robbie, you could die. I'm like, well, I know this is pretty windy and stuff like that, but no, I think I'll be all right. No, don't go. Now, that person was looking out for me. It's a friend of mine. Looking out for me. But I was like, no, I'll be, I think I'll be all right. And I drove up here, and it's a bit windy to start off with, um, especially in London. As I got near here, the sun would, I'd have to be pulling the visor down, the amount of sun that was shining, the weather was beautiful. Now, if I would have followed that fear, I might have rung up Max and said, yeah, you know what, Max? I'm going to the Arsenal game, mate. <laughs> and he would have said, yeah, I knew he'd have used that to get out of this. <laughs> but I didn't. I didn't let fear change my mind on it. Just like when I started my business, a lot of people, when I said to them what I was going to start doing, I'm going to set up this football fan channel which gives fans a chance to have their say at Arsenal. Had no experience in filming. Didn't have a social media channel. Didn't know how to edit a video. All I had was an idea. And when I told a couple of friends of mine what I planned to do, they go, you mad! You ain't done, what are you talking about, Robbie, man? Is this another one of your big schemes now? you never done no football channel, but yeah, you're an Arsenal supporter, you've been going for years, well, what do you know about filming? What do you know about it? That, that's going to flop. And for a time, I was thinking, you know what, they could be right. I put together a plan for the idea, and I went to a friend of mine who did a similar sort of channel called IFL TV. His name's called Coogan Cassie. He's got a great boxing channel. Big Arsenal fan, me and him going to watch games since we were back at Highbury. And I said to him, Coogan, look at this idea. And he looked over it and he said, hey, you know, that's Robbie, a, a decent idea. But unfortunately, I'm too busy with what I'm doing to join you on this. So I'm sorry, I'm not going to be able to do it. I was crestfallen. I was like, that's it. It's true what everyone was saying, man. This idea is going to crash. Because I, I don't know how to do it. And I said it earlier after, when I was saying to you guys about a takeaway from taking something from today. This is the truth. I went to, I went to this men's conference. I was over in um, America. And I remember one of the speakers was talking. And he said, he goes, lots of you in here have ideas in your head. But he goes, you know what you lot do, some of you? It's going to make it go to waste. You have that great idea, and you'll go make it go to waste. So he goes, I challenge all of you in here, he goes, when you leave here, to go back home and put that idea into fruition. And it almost seemed to me like he was talking directly to me. I remember, I remember it as clear as day. So anyway, I just said to myself, when I got back to England, I said, you know what? Stuff it, I'm doing this. I don't care if I, don't, if I ain't got no experience. Or, I'm doing it. So I rang up a friend of mine, I said, listen, um, I need a website built, right? Gave him the idea and stuff. He, he'd done some stuff for me previously in the past. He put together the website and everything, and then he said to me, he goes, you know what, Robbie? I like your idea, you know. And I've got a little bit of experience in filming and editing. I used to work like part-time at a film, you know, a little studio where they did little adverts and that. So I said, is it? So he said, yeah. He goes, I wouldn't mind joining up with you to help you. I go, yeah. I go, all right, good. Right, so he joined up with me. At the time, I was working as a building surveyor. I didn't really have, you know, I had um, just my money that I earned from my work. I sunk everything into it. Um, didn't, couldn't even afford a camera at the time or a microphone. We borrowed it from the studio that he worked at. Turned up at Arsenal one day, just started filming, interviewing fans. I'm thinking to myself, How's this going to go down? I remember the first guy that we went up to after the game um, said to him, mate, you want to ever talk about RC? He goes, who the F are you lot? I go, what? <laughs> I go, this is going to be a long day. 
But fortunately, we won the game. I remember we played Tottenham, beat them 5-2, right? So everybody was in a good mood. And we managed to get some interviews with people. And straight away, I could see, I was like, this is good. Because some of the people who we interviewed on the day, they shared the videos. I think when we were interviewing them, they were very skeptical. But when they saw the videos come out, they were like, actually, the quality of them next looks good. And, you know, and they started, obviously, on social media, it's all about sharing videos. And they shared it. So I was like, wow, looks like I've sort of overcome my first checkmate moment. And we've got this thing off the ground. And straight away, I said to um, my partners, I said to them, you know what? The plan was to do every home game, but this has gone so well, we're going to have to do every game. He goes, how the hell are we going to do that, Robbie, every game? We're going to get money to do that for. We can barely afford to do this. I said, you know what? Again, being fearless or stupid, one of the two, you could say, right? I said, I don't know. I don't know right now. And right now ain't the time to work it out, but we're doing it. He said, okay, all right, let's do this. Let's do this. So we started doing every game after that. I remember the next game after that was Aston Villa away, went up there on the coach. When we went up there on the coach, I was saying to him, you know what? I can't come up on the coach. Because after the game, I want to get more fans. And the coach leaves too quick. We have to drive up there. So we started driving. We started hiring cars and stuff like that. Meanwhile, remember, he said, I'm, I'm working at the same time. It was really tough. Sometimes I'd go to football games. I was so skinned, I had to bring sandwiches with me. And trust me, that ain't cool at a game. <laughs> right? So it was a really, really hard journey. But again, I was just like, we're just going to keep doing this. We're going to keep doing this. And we're going to grow this. And it started to grow, 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 grow. And then around about 2014, we had a real big moment. Um, I remember it was the start of the season for Arsenal. And we, we got off to a really poor start. We had a game against Aston. We, we sort of had a whole summer where we hadn't really signed no players. And fans were a bit annoyed about that. And we lost our first game. And obviously, us giving fans a platform to have their say, fans were really a bit upset. And the videos got shared widely. I mean, they went viral. I remember I, I woke up the next day and, like, they were like, one video had done a million views, the other one had done like 800,000, the other one 700. I was like, what? I had newspapers contacting me. Just, that was the moment then I really realised that, yeah, this thing's starting to blow up. All the hard work is sort of coming to fruition. This is brilliant. We're growing, we're growing, we're growing. But along that journey now, it's not just success, success, success. You're going to get these checkmate moments. And I've had loads of them. Sometimes some of these checkmate moments are moments you need to overcome that can then make you grow again. And you don't even realize it at the time. So I remember when the next checkmate moment was sort of the established media in football. I don't think they too liked us, if I'm being honest. They kind of looked down on us. Um, like one of the speakers said earlier, they underestimated us. They just thought, yeah, they're just a little noisy lot. They got lucky, you know, they have some fans on, they ran. They didn't see the science behind what we did. They didn't see the fact that for the, one of the first times ever, we were giving ordinary fans a chance to have their say, which is something that in football wasn't normally done. It's normally always your traditional pundits, you know, your ex-footballer, your journalists, and fans just, like, didn't really count. But what we did is we said, no, fans are the ones that really count, and they're at the forefront of what we do. So we were getting a lot of grief off of them. And then one time, uh, Gary Neville, who you guys all will know from uh, Sky, he called us out. He called us out. We had a game against Chelsea. We lost. There were some fans that were really upset. Gary Neville called us out, basically saying that, you know, what is this, these little ranting rabble. So when I heard it, I was like, you know what? we got a big platform here now. I'm calling you out as well. Who the hell are you to call us out? You know what I mean? These fans, they've spent their hard-earned money and they've gone to the game and they're upset about what they've seen. Quite rightly so, because if I remember rightly, I think we got a bit like about 6 nil at Chelsea. What do you expect fans to do? Just walk up. They're upset. 
So I called him out. And when I called him out now, <laughs> um, he, he got a little bit of backlash and it was a bit of back and forth and that. And to cut a long story short, Sky then got in contact with me and they said, do you want to sit down with Gary Neville? You know, like a sort of head to head. I was like, yeah, I go, okay, bring it. But I said, you know what? I want to bring some fans with me so that they can put their point of view. So they said, yes. So I remember we sat down at Sky Studios about five of us as fans and Gary Neville, and we had it out. He put his point of view, we put our point of view. To be fair to him, um, he was really, really good, really respectful. He listened, we listened to him. We shook hands at the end. And I think there, he, you know, there was a real respect for both sides, because I respect these journalists, I really do. But their neighbors started to respect us. And I think that was kind of the catalyst for a lot of journalists now and people in the established media starting to say, Do you know what, these guys are doing something really good. They started even some of these media companies, started copying what we're doing. Copying things that we were doing on different platforms, doing a lot of things that we sort of innovated, they started doing as well, which I saw as a real compliment. So that again was a real checkmate moment. Um, and as the business has grown, I mean, I've, I, you know, even during the pandemic, I remember when they turned around and they said, there's not going to be any more, there's not going to be no football. I'm like, what are we going to do? We interview fans outside the game. Nobody can go. What are we going to do? We came up with an idea for a watch along um, with fans, which went down brilliantly. Um, we got nominated for an award for that, um, for that innovation. You know, Another checkmate moment overcome by just being fearless, but just not being caught up in the moment. During the pandemic, um, I went and got a studio down in North London. People again saying to me, Robbie, are you mad? It's a pandemic. People are not even allowed out. You're going to get a studio. Who's going to go in it? I said, don't worry, man. This pandemic's not going to last forever. And after that, I want to have a studio. I want to be able to shoot. I want to do another channel, a, a, a sports channel. Um, with all football, and we got the studio, and the studio's going brilliantly right now. Another checkmate moment that, you know, by being fearless, I was able to, to overcome. And in growing my business, one of the things that I've been really, really proud of, um, and it was pointed out to me one day, I think it was a journalist from The Guardian who was doing an interview with me, and he said to me, he goes, Robbie, he goes, I really like what you've done with your company. He goes, it's so diverse. I've got about 20 people who work with me. And then I was saying, is it? He goes, yeah, he goes, he goes you've got black people, you've got white people. He goes, you've got gay people, you've got straight, you've got Muslim working for you, you've got a Jewish guy, you've got Sikh. I was like, I didn't even realize that. Because as far as I'm concerned, when I'm employing people, I just look for the best person for the job. So if you're good, you're in. I don't care. What do I care? That's how it should be. And I've just been doing that without even thinking about it. And then I started thinking to myself, when I look in the industry that I'm in, which is sports or football, media, it's not diverse enough. It's not diverse. In, I mean, there's been some improvements in it. We had the whole Black Lives Matter and stuff like that that came up and you know a lot of companies to be fair to them have been consciously trying to get more people of color and more diversity into their companies but still when you look at football in particular it's not diverse enough and i was just really pleased that we were able to show that you can do it with a real diverse workforce and still produce brilliant content and I'm hoping that that's going to set an example to a lot of these big companies there. Because one of the things is, you look around football, in particular, the decision makers in football, there's not, you know, I, I don't see people like me. You know? It's not diverse enough. And if the decision makers are not diverse, then we're not going to see people like me coming in. So this is one of the things now that I'm, I'm really, you know, always pushing that and saying to, you know, we want to see that change. And the way to change it sometimes is by leading by example. And I was so pleased that, you know, 
we was able to show, and we're still able to show, but with that, you can have a diverse company within football. And another thing that I've been really proud of is that I've been able to empower a lot of people to get into football and do their own sports channel because the technology around things like YouTube and Instagram and TikTok and all that has been fantastic. And loads of people now are starting up their own channels and doing their own, you know, things to do with football. And even if you want to get into the traditional media, being able to do your own channel sometimes and having that proof of concept will help you to further your career. So it's been really an honour for me to be going to give talks at various events like this one. Um, I've given a talk before at Eton College. I remember when they called me up, I thought it was a prank. <laughs> right? But, you know, I've, I've, I've given talks at so many different schools and events and really been able to um, help to inspire a lot of people to get involved into media. And it wasn't something I was expecting at the start of this journey. And I always look back and say, what if I'd have been scared at the start? What if I'd have given up and said, listen to what everybody was telling me? I wouldn't be stood here right now. Definitely wouldn't be stood here right now speaking to you guys if I would have given in to the fear. So my message is to be fearless because, you know, as I said, doing events like this, traveling around the world, doing football, Australia, China, America, everywhere you can think of I've been because of the business that I set up. And I was no different to anybody in this room. Just an ordinary guy who had an idea. But if I'd have been filled with fear, the idea would have died. And I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. So my thing is, be fearless sometimes when you get them checkmate moments. Sometimes those checkmate moments are there for a reason. I truly believe that. They have been, you've been handed a challenge to overcome something. And it's how you overcome it, that's what's going to shape your future. And we all face them, and I'm going to face many more. Even sometimes from fans. I've faced problems where fans are saying, oh, we don't like what you do, Robbie. We think every fan should just not say anything. They should be just quiet. And I'm like, well, with respect, I don't. <laughs> I'm going to go in a different direction. And my thing is, I'm a, I like being a disruptor. And to be a disruptor, you've got to be a bit fearless. So, be fearless. Chase your dreams. Enjoy your journey. And um, once again, I want to thank you very much for having me today. I really appreciate it. As I said... And I did mean it when I said it right at the start. I missed the game to be here. And I'm glad I missed it. You know, because it would be absolutely enjoyable being here, speaking to you guys, listening to some of these incredible speakers today. And um, it's been an honor for me. And uh, yeah, just keep being fearless. Thank you very much.